Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today we're going to make sea salt spa bars and I love this recipe. It's a cold processed soap recipe with a heavy heavy load of sea salt and it makes a wonderful bar of soap. If you've never tried a salt soap before I encourage you to give it a try. I've done this video before you know I always do a different twist with fragrances and molds and colors but um, I will share the full recipe in the description box down below I love a good salt bar it is not as exfoliating as you think and especially the sea salt I'm going to be using is a very fine grind so I have this sea salt and I have this sea salt because I need both of these uh, I need a lot of salt for this again I'll share the recipe as we go through it but sea salt is in order of the day today um so yeah it's not super exfoliating but it has a really soft feel salt is a water softener even in hard water it gives a beautiful soft silky lather and um, salt is really good for your skin and all of that this is a bar of soap it'll get you good and clean that's what i'm saying about it let's talk about the fragrance today this is from marouge canada i'm going to be using purple harmony fragrance and one of the things I love about Marouge Canada is they have all the scent notes written on there. They have how much vanillin. So this does have 0.27% vanillin. It might discolor a little, probably not a lot though. And it tells you how much percentage you can use in um, what products you're doing. So today we're doing soap, it's three to 6%. I just love all the information on here, very, very handy. Let me read the scent notes to you because this smells good. It, it is a floral. And, but it's really complicated and um, so I guess it would be a feminine floral scent, but it's deeper than that. My husband likes it. Let me read it to you here. Uh, top notes of water lily, apple and grapefruit, middle notes of iris, violet and orchid, and bottom notes of heliotrope, musk and amber. And I think it's the musk and amber that add that depth. And so it's not like a bouquet of flowers scent. It's, it's richer than that. It's really good. That's what we're using today. And for the color, well, let me show you the molds and then it'll make sense. For the molds, I have my sunflower molds and I love these. I've used these before, got these on Amazon. Oh, I got a whole bunch of them. <laughs> I'll leave a link down below. I love them. And so for the flower part, I'm gonna be doing from Bee Scented Tangerine Mica. And if this darkens up just a little, I think that'll be pretty. That's why I chose this color. That'll be the flower part. And on the next day, I'm gonna take some mica paint and paint the little seeds on the sunflowers with a brown mica. We'll talk about it when we get there. It just kicks it up a notch. It makes it look really pretty. And of course, that mica will wash off after the first couple of uses, but it's so pretty in the package. But it makes photography fun because it looks really beautiful. So I think I'll be doing that. We'll see how it comes out. But anyway, that's the color, the scent, the salt. I think we got it all covered. I've got to get everything pulled together and let's come back and make some sea salt spa bars. All right, we are ready to make our lye solution for the salt soap. And I'd like to do that first so that I can get it in an ice bath and let it start cooling off. If I haven't already pre-made, um, sometimes I'll make batches of lye the night before and just let them cool naturally. That's a convenient way to do it, but I wanted to do it here with you all. So today is gonna to be an aloe vera lye solution. And the way I like to do it, you could do 100% aloe vera. This is the kind I'm using today. I got this at Walmart in the pharmacy section. Um, this is also on Amazon. There's a link in my Amazon store for this. Uh, it's a very good aloe vera juice. It soaps beautifully, no scorching issues at all. I just love it. I like to do 50% aloe vera, 50% distilled water. That's how I like to do it. You could do 100% aloe if you want it. It's up to you. So we need 20 ounces of uh, liquid in here. So I'm going to do 10 aloe vera and 10 distilled water. Have my scale tear it out here. juice and here's the distilled water I got this at Walmart any distilled water will do and one of the reasons why you want to use a distilled water rather than just tap water is tap water can have different minerals and things in there that can affect your soap so distilled water is just really safe super neutral and will cause you no issues you could use tap water if that's all you have access to. You can melt snow and use that. You know, it's really up to you. But distilled water is just a nice, neutral, clean water that you know is not gonna have any mineralizing weird issues in your soap. So I gotta get this up to 20 ounces here. 
And not that there's anything wrong with minerals in your water. I hope I didn't say that. You could use mineral water to make soap. <laughs> it depends on where you are, if you're on city water, well water, you know, it can just be different and distilled water is consistent. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, now I am going to get my sugar in here and my silk fiber, so let me go grab those. Okay, now I'm going to add my sugar. This is just unbleached uh, natural sugar. I call it, you know, cane sugar. Um, white sugar will do. You could do powdered sugar and you could do zero sugar at all. The reason I add sugar is it is a lather builder and a lather booster in the soap. And I really like bubbly lather. So that's why I add the sugar. Totally optional. So you do not have to add this in. But if you want to add it in, you definitely need to dissolve it in your water before you add the lye. It does not dissolve well after the lye is added in here. It just kind of crystallizes into chunks and caramelizes. It's not good. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Dissolve it before you add the lye. This is a two tablespoon scoop and it's almost full. So I'd say this is about, you know, not quite two tablespoons, just shy. You could do two tablespoons full. One of the rules of thumb with additives is one teaspoon per pound of oils. That's a very loosey-goosey, you know, definitely not a hard and fact but anyway I did about two tablespoons of sugar in here for this recipe you could add more you could add less you don't have to add any at all so I'm just gonna stir this once in a while till it's all dissolved and I, I'm using my wide mouth container so hopefully you all can see that that is not dissolved and if I poured the lye in here right now that would just clump up into a big caramel chunk and um, not good for soap making <laughs> So here is my Tussa Silk fibers. I buy these in bulk. Um, Be Scented carries Tussa Silk. I got these on Amazon. They are natural, unbleached. Um, they do have some little flecks in there, so uh, it can leave little spots in your soap if that bothers you. You can get the bleached. You can do mulberry silk. That seems to be a really beautiful silk and soap. Um, if you're vegan, you could do corn silk or, uh, oh, I can't remember. There's a couple of options, I think, for vegans out there. I have not tried those yet. So anyway, here it is. I'm going to grab, it comes in like these skeins or just ropes of fibers. And you can see, I, I think you can see some of the natural little um, flecks in there. And that's just kind of part of having a natural substance. So it doesn't bother me at all, these little natural fibers. So I'm just going to pinch off and I have no weight for you. I can't tell you how much this weighs, but just it's so lightweight. If I bunch it up, it's like the tip of a Q-tip, about that much, maybe a little more. But the way I do it is I used to take scissors and snip it into little chunks, um, and that works great, but I found it melts just as good if I just stretch it out. And I'm gonna plop this in here once I know the sugar's dissolved. And when I pour the lye solution in here, as soon as it heats up, this just melts and disperses right in here smooth easy peasy so it looks like all my sugar is dissolved so i'm going to float my little silk in there and i sink it down with my spatula now let's go get the lye and get it measured out okay we are back and i need 8.2 ounces of sodium hydroxide lye and i put it in these containers i buy in bulk and then split it off into smaller containers just to manage it easier um, some people are comfortable measuring their lye straight into their liquid that's awesome I just, you know, because I'm shaking it out of this container, I prefer to measure it into a separate container first. I just think it makes measuring a teeny bit easier for me. And if I ever did over pour, it would be easy to remove it. So uh, 8.2 ounces. And when I write the recipe in the description box down below, I will also have this in gram form for those of you that like to measure in grams, which I think is the majority of the world. <laughs> So let's see here, 8.2, there we go. So here's the lye, our silk is down in there, sugar is melted and we're just gonna dump it right in. You don't have to go slow or worry about that, but uh, this is going to start steaming off as it heats up and you can feel, I don't know if you can hear it, the grittiness on the bottom, you want to stir this until you feel no grit. You want to make sure you keep stirring until it's 100% dissolved. And I don't know if you can see the steam coming off. It heats up so fast. It's quite a chemical reaction there. It's very smooth. There's no more grit. Let me go get my thermometer and show you what this heated up to so fast. 
Okay, so it's literally been, you know, maybe 10 seconds since I poured that lye in here, maybe less. And we're at 167 right now. Give it a second, it's gonna heat up even more. It's pretty impressive. And uh, this was the aloe vera and the distilled water were refrigerated cooled. So I don't know what how cold my fridge is, but it came out of the refrigerator. So it was very cold when I made this. Let's see here. Yep, 173, it's still heating up. So that's just to say, be very cautious. This is not a recipe I would make with small children and I would not have pets around your table when you're doing it. Um, just use good safety precautions, safety glasses, gloves. And now, all that being said, I'm gonna go pop this in an ice bath and we will come back and measure out our oils for the recipe. All right, we're back and what I'm gonna do is add my hard oils and butters in here and get them melted and then we'll add our liquid oil. So what I need is 48 ounces of coconut oil to start off with. All right, we've got that. Now I need three ounces of shea butter. Okay, let me tear the scale and now we need three ounces of cocoa butter. Let's go get these melted. I'm gonna pulse this in the microwave. If you hate the microwave, you could definitely use a double boiler and use a container that works with a double boiler. That's another great way to melt this down, but we'll be back when this is all melted. We are back with our melted hard oils and butters, and to this I'm going to add six ounces of castor oil. And one of the reasons I wait, I melt my hard oils first and then add my liquid oils, as the liquid oils are here down here in my studio at room temperature, and they will help cool this off because it had to heat up. Let's tell it, let's see here. This is at 125 degrees right now, and I don't want to soak that hot. So the liquid oil will help cool this off, the blending of the additives. By the time we get done with all that, it cools down to under 100 degrees usually, and then I'm comfortable soaping. Um, if I pre-make my oils, they're down around 8, 70 to 80 degrees, and I'm good soaping there too. I am not super picky about my soap temps. Some people are. Um, and you know, maybe that's why I have some inconsistent results sometimes. I have things speed up or slow down. It might be my soap temps. So that's something to keep in mind. But I'm comfortable soaping in a range from 60 to 100. <laughs> Here is, by the way, this is my sea salt. I measured it out. I have 36 ounces of sea salt here. I'm gonna set off to the side until we're ready for that. So let me grab my castor oil. And here is my castor oil. I got this on Amazon. It was the best price I could find when I needed it. And so there it is. Get the castor blended in with all the other oils here. And let me go grab my soap additives and we'll add all the additives in here while my lye solution is cooling. All right, I've got all of my dry additives here. And today, I don't know, I just has started doing this the first time I made salt soap and I just have continued. I'm gonna add coconut milk powder in here along with my oats and clay. So let's get them measured in here. This is a little smaller than my normal soap batch. So this is a two tablespoon scoop and I'm gonna go a little shy on it. Um, a good, again, the good rule of thumb is one, one teaspoon to one tablespoon per pound of oils for your additives. You can kind of play around and see what you like. A little shy there on the oats and the coconut milk. I'm gonna go for a full one. And I need to make sure I blend this really well because it's a little chunky. That's one of the reasons why I love to blend these in the oils before we get the lye in there is because I can make sure it's nice and smooth and start absorbing into the oils. I'm also gonna be adding the mica right in the oils, but let's get this blended up first so I can see any chunks. Then we'll add the colorant in there. looks beautiful and chunk free. So here I'm going to add my colorant right in here since these are all going to be one solid color. Makes things simple. All right, we're back 
up with our cooled aloe vera lye solution here and I'm not going to add sodium lactate in here because the salt does the same thing. It makes the soap super duper hard so there's no need. It's unnecessary. So no sodium lactate today. Got the salt, got the lye, got the oils with all the additives. We are ready to roll. Here is my fragrance and again I love Marouge Canada for putting the usage rate. This says you usage in soap is three to six percent and I usually typically don't ever go over 5%. There's a rare occasion, but typically. So I'm going in at about 5%, so I'm gonna use this entire little four ounce bottle of fragrance in here, but I wanna to get to a very light emulsion, light, light trace, definite emulsion, light trace, before I add the fragrance. After the fragrance is blended, we'll add the salt, get it all mixed up and then we'll get to pouring into our molds that I have on trays here. Anytime you're using a really flexy mold, I recommend putting it on a tray so that if you did need to move it or clean up around the area, you can move them without spillage. <laughs> so there's a pro tip for you. Use a tray if you've got one. All right, let's get to blending all this up. Look at this color, by the way. Isn't that beautiful? And uh, again, this does have just a touch of vanillin, so this might darken up a little bit more, but I think it's beautiful. It just looks like a sunset orange to me. next day and for this volume that I made today in ounces I got 29 bars poured um, these ones are at least three and a half to four ounces these are a little bit more at four plus but after the cure we're gonna just call these three and a half ounce bars all of them so let's get them out of the mold and see how these are you don't with salt soaps they are ready to unmold usually within hours of pouring I just let them go overnight because you know I get busy doing other things, but they firm up so hard, so quickly. Isn't that gorgeous? I love these. This orange is beautiful. And again, it might darken up just a touch. And uh, you know, in a minute here, we're going to come back and I'll talk about making the little seed colors. But they're so pretty. I'm just tickled. The fragrance smells fabulous today. It is very strong. Um, well, not strong in a bad way. It's just very present, and I love that. You know, if you're going to take the time to put a fragrance in your soap, you want to smell it, and this definitely comes through. So cute. All right, let's do one of these. And again, I will leave a link for these silicone molds down in the description box. I just love them. They're so pretty. So we got two different sunflowers. These ones are a little bit thicker. These ones are a little bit broader. So they are both actually, these are a tad heavier um, even though these are taller, but they're very similar in size. Two different versions of a sunflower. I love it. So let me get the rest of these unmolded and we will come back and do a little bit of mica decorating in the seed portion of these flowers. We're back and it's time to do a little mica painting and what I have here is some chocolate brown mica from Be Scented and I have my rubbing alcohol and the reason you want to use rubbing alcohol in here is because the alcohol will evaporate off very quickly and just leave the mica behind and so it's perfect it, it sticks on beautifully so I I don't have measurements here I'm just adding enough alcohol to wet the mica I don't want too much and I don't want too little you know, you want to make kind of a thick slushy. There we go. 
So, and this was about maybe a half a teaspoon of mica in there. I'm gonna use my little makeup brush that I only use for soap. This is not for makeup, <laughs> um, but I had an extra makeup brush in one of the, you know, when you buy makeup brushes, they come with a lot of brushes and I didn't need this one upstairs in my makeup drawer. So it came down and was designated to the soap area. So yeah, there you go. You can see it's a little bit liquid. It's kind of thick, so it's very mica heavy and you want that. So let's, just grab one of these, and I'm just simply gonna paint the seed portion here with my mica, and it looks so pretty. And again, this will wash off in the first couple of uses, but look how pretty that is. It makes packaging and photography beautiful. I think it just kind of amps up the sunflower um, vibe of this, so I love it. So I'm just gonna get all the rest of these painted up with my mica. And that is about it. They're gonna go on the curing rack for a full cure time of about four to six weeks, thereabouts. I will take one of these and weigh it. And every several days, I will come back in and reweigh it. And when it stops evaporating liquid and the weight is stable, I consider it cured. And that typically takes four weeks or just a little over. So that's why I say four to six weeks. Somebody asked me 46 weeks and I said, no, it's four or six, not four, 46. So hopefully you understand that. So I'm just gonna sit here and paint these. This is kind of relaxing. I actually love this and it looks beautiful. Um, so these will go on the curing rack. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you've never tried a salt soap, I really encourage you give the recipe a try or buy yourself a bar of salt soap. You will love it. These make wonderful facial bars. I love to use these in the evenings when I'm removing my makeup and just washing my face at the end of the day. I think a salt soap is luxurious. I love it. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and I appreciate you taking the time to be with me and I hope that you have a wonderful day.